Today's Cinema Confidential takes you on set with the hit TV show Murdoch Mysteries. We're going to meet some of the main characters and actors as well as we're going to visit some of the main sets that the crew has been building for the past 12 years. As well, you can see we're in the middle of the action right now and any minute they're going to tell me to get the hell out of here All right, because so let's invite they're going to start let's invite shooting. The crew. We're gonna Yes? You couldn't imagine. <coughs> oh, Detective Murdoch, doctor. Helene Joy is an Australian actress that has been in Dr. Julia Ogden's skin for the past 12 years as part of the hit TV show Murdoch Mysteries. Over 15 years ago, Helene moved to Canada and started working there. After meeting the creator of the show, she was immediately offered the role of Julia, a brave scientist who helps in criminal investigations and conquers the heart of Detective William Murdoch. The story takes place in 19th century Toronto and in every single episode the team has a case to crack. She is kind, bold, stubborn and quite beautiful. Well, I gotta say that from what I've seen, Dr. Ogden is super ahead of her time. She's like very modern, she's very cool. Writers have done an incredible job on this show of creating a woman that is, um, we take a little bit of uh, license in making her quite modern in ways that perhaps was quite rare. However, if you do uh, look back in history, these women did exist and there are women who are forging ahead and doing things that people don't think of. As, uh, as women's roles at that time, but they existed. And so we sort of have molded all of those wonderful women into one character, which I think is really fun. Is that one of the reasons why you dedicated so many years to her? You personally? Yes, you she's are. A, a really <laughs> enjoyable character, you know, um, and the writers never cease to amaze me coming up with the next thing and the newest thing. I mean, Dr. Ogden goes into so many different areas. You know, she starts off in the morgue and then there's her psychological journey uh, as a psychiatrist and, and then there's many different professions that rise out of that and um, there's even a new one this year. I mean, wonderful things are happening. And so they've just uh, allowed themselves to, um, to evolve the characters as time has gone and so it never gets boring. Tell me about those costumes, because that seems to be a huge part of the show, and especially for your character. I mm -hmm. mean, a woman at, at, at that time, yes. uh, she has a new outfit in every scene. Yes, clothing is a very big uh, part of a show when you're doing a period piece. And um, the, the designers, which we've had a few now, but um, they do a, such a beautiful job of looking at really what was happening at the time and then sort of tweaking it for the modernness of this woman. And so we get to play with so many incredible fabrics and designs and it's changed a little bit over time but um, always very true to the time with a little twist and they're absolutely beautiful. It's so much fun to wear these kinds of costumes. And you guys have, um, the main characters are obviously there from the very beginning mm -hmm. and they're still um, running uh, on the show. Mm -hmm. How do you guys create it, I guess, that energy between you that, you know, we see it on the screen, but I'm guessing you, you kind of have to have the same behind the camera in order to keep going for so long. Yeah, we, we have an incredible set. It's just really, every guest that comes on, we have wonderful guests that come on the show and sometimes repeat, they all say the same thing and that it's just the most wonderful set to come to. We just have a really great energy between us and have a lot of fun, but I always come back to writing. You know, if the writing isn't right, and if they're not writing for your character to really uh, develop, and then they're not building the relationships in the way that is helpful, um, then it, it, people don't feel satisfied and don't get to play as much as they would like to. And, and the, the, it just gets better every year so that they build relationships and you have sort of, uh, after this amount of time, you have a shorthand with other characters. You have this kind of comic, uh, emotional relationship and uh, those things are just never get boring as an actor when they're, when they're written well. It's, it's also very interesting in, from the audience point of view, like for example when I watch the show I am curious what's going to happen in the end, who is the killer, but mm -hmm. then I'm also curious when are they going to finally get together, <laughs> you know, because that took a It's an age old formula for television but it absolutely works and our audience just can't get enough of it for some reason. 
they just, uh, you know, there's a lot of power in building a sort of true love relationship and they really have done a wonderful job of that. Like it's, it's not saccharine and it's not uh, predictable. They really have a ever evolving, deep sort of relationship. And so it's, uh, I think it's just really a testament to the writing. And then, yeah, Yannick and I have managed to sort of navigate something that just keeps changing, but it never gets boring to the viewer, which is great. And speaking of never getting boring, I always like it when, when you know, when, when there are terms strictly medical, like mm -hmm. from the morgue point of view. Yeah. Like in terms of preparation, how hard or how fun is that? It's just pure hard. <laughs> <laughs> there is no fun. <laughs> you know, uh, there's plenty of other stuff that's fun, yeah. but that is not fun. I, I, mean, I can't lie about it. It's pure work. And uh, it's, it's a funny thing because I've done many different roles in my career and, and uh, and things that I've been awarded for, so dramatic or emotional, and people, you know, you're often awarded uh, as an actor for those kind of deeply dramatic roles, you know, where you're crying or you're dying or something like that. And but in actual fact, none of that is hard. That is easy, easy, easy. What's hard is having incredibly dense language that you have to rattle off like it's a second nature to you, whilst do, performing surgery with your hands, you know, with fake organs and blood up to your elbows. That's hard. It's one of the hardest jobs I've ever done. And uh, I love it that people say I, I make it look really natural, but it's not at all. It's just hard. And you have, you also have to do it in a different accent. Yes, because I yeah I don't sound. You don't sound like that. I don't sound like Julie <laughs> at all. And so uh, it's funny, really, when the, particularly in the first four years of the show. Every time you know, every time we'd be surprised. Oh my God, the show's coming back again. Okay, so because you would just you know put it out of your mind like it it may never happen again. And so every year we come back to it, I'd have to. You know, like reset my mind, and I'd watch the episode. I'm like, what is that voice? Like, <laughs> where did I come up with that? Like, honestly, it sort of came from me naturally, but um, and with a specific accent in mind, and the, the British influence at the time. A lot of well-to-do people had it sounded very British in Canada, just like Australia at that time. But you know, and but well, also quite high-pitched compared to me, and a little breathier than I sound. And, and every single time, I have to sort of do this accent and this sound all over again and, and immerse myself. Now I can literally just swap between me and Julia because it's just another part of me. <laughs> I believe the spleen is enlarged. More gauze. The patient is an inebriant. Enlarged spleens are a side effect of chronic alcohol use. Can you see the laceration? Yes, there it is. Would you recommend repairing the laceration or a complete splenectomy? Due to the enlargement of splenectomy. I agree. I saw a lot of cards and letters that, uh, and drawings that mm -hmm. fans have uh, done for you guys over the years. What is, I guess, maybe the strangest fan reaction that you've had or encountered? The <laughs> well, it never get. I mean, it's happened many times. I can't think of one specific encounter right now, but um, for me, the strangest thing is that, that there are people who really don't uh, don't really understand that you're not the character. Yeah. You, you know, they really are in, deeply enamored with the character, only to find that you're not that person and that I disappoint people. I actually disappoint people when I meet them in person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because God. My hair's down, I dress like a modern person. I have Australian accent. I mean, even my accent is a little bit uh, Canadian right now, but it, you know, given some time, I just go back to full Australian. I have quite a broad sounding lower voice. Uh, I can swear like a trucker and I, <laughs> and I'll dress like a hippie and people are just like, no, you know, they're very uh, they're shocked and a little disappointed. Yeah. So it <laughs> It's been funny, I've been on sets where um, I, I was changed out of my costume and then there's all these fans who are in a country town or whatever and I'll, I'll go stand with them to say hi and I've said, you know, and they're like, oh, are we going to see? And I'm like, oh, I'm Julia, I come over to say hi and they've just straight out told me I'm not. <laughs> so when, when, when uh, yeah, fans will say, you're not her, uh, that's strange. Yeah, okay, <laughs> sure, I that. came all this way to say hi to you, but I think I'll leave. That is very strange. It is strange. Yeah. Do you ever think of the day where you actually have to say goodbye to Julia? Uh, no, weirdly, because it, it just seems so far away. Strangely, it really does seem far away, but it will be, um, you know, when we sort of do it day to day, 
you just don't think about that. But how nostalgic I would be about it, sort of, I feel like maybe a couple of years after it's over, I'll be like, wow, yeah. you know, that was a, like a very big part of my life for quite a long time. And this character has had a big impact on a lot of people. I, I know that to be true now. And, and it's, yeah, it will make me nostalgic for some time. What would you like to play next or when you're in between uh, shoots? Well, it's always the case that wh whatever you're playing, you want to do completely the opposite. So, mm -hmm. and I have done many things that are very opposite, but you know, for me, just to be m modern, <laughs> yeah, just to be modern, you know, I feel like I have to go to the extreme and do like some heavy nudity. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would like that. <laughs> just, just to something utterly shocking that people wouldn't expect from me, because I really do think that over time people perceive you a certain way, and and you know, the character is very um, poised and very graceful and very um, intellectual and all of those wonderful things. So it'd be great to do something utterly the opposite from that. It might be shocking to the fans, but big fun for me. How often do you manage to go back home? Because Australia is pretty far and yes. you live here permanently, right? Yes. Uh, I go every couple of years. These days I've been going every year. So for a month or so I go back. Because it's not hard to leave here in the middle of winter and it's summer down there. So yeah. yeah. I'm guessing it's pretty cool. It's pretty great. <laughs> and tell me more about your, um, your career, the beginning. Why did you decide to be an actor? You have done a lot of theater as well. Mm -hmm. I, uh, it's funny, uh, you know, I honestly think it has to do with people who have, uh, you know, um, affect you, teachers, etc. And I, I have a, had a teacher at high school who was a, my English teacher, but she was also my, the drama teacher. And I really put it down to her influence. I feel like if she had been my science teacher, I would have gone into science because I was actually very good at those things. Like science, biology, it's funny that I play doctors. Uh, those things came very easily to me and, and um, was fascinating to me. The arts was actually more a challenge, but um, I got into theatre and I, the first show I ever did was clowning. I played a clown and it was a beautiful show. I remember it was very touching, a lot of people cried, or, you know, was, um, and you just sort of go, oh, and you realise you can do something, yeah. a, you have an effect on people. And so I continued with her and she's still a friend of mine, I, go, I see her when I'm in Australia. She's very proud of the fact that I make a living as an actor and she started it all. And so really it started there and through high school and then I never really wanted to do anything else. And how do you relax outside of set? How do you... Uh, I like to exercise a lot. I like to go dancing a lot. I'm a big dancer. Uh, I travel a lot. And uh, I just came back from Europe actually just two days ago from Mallorca. And uh, so I tend to seek the sun and uh, music and uh, anything physical really, I'm just, that's how I relax mostly, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Watch Murdoch Mysteries on Epic Drama. That, my dear, is a woman of action. Did you manage to film that? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent.